Hello, Dreamfasters, and welcome to the Unknown Creatures of Thra. In this series, we will be discussing the brand new beings introduced into Dark Crystal's mythology, helping us all to gain a better understanding of this glorious world through the eyes of some of the most fascinating, charming, and unique animals in the universe. So, let's begin this journey. Native to the Endless Forest, with a diet consisting mostly of paper, the Pluffum is a small, bright, spirited creature, standing as high as a Gelfling's knee, with lush green moss flowing from its head and ears, matching its green fur. Its love for paper came from its insatiable appetite for tree bark, which was their native diet, using its dexterous webbed hands to do so. With lively, gangly features, often accompanied by pure emotions and humanistic reactions, this led many Gelfling to adopt these creatures as pets and companions, though not without sacrificing one of their many book collections. Since the Age of Resistance, the Armalig has become a very familiar sight. During the Age of Division, these creatures were used as wheels for the Skeksis' carriages, as they had the ability to turn themselves into armored balls and roll across any surface with great ease and speed. They were a faded green in color, with segmented bodies, rounded heads, and sad eyes. But don't let its demeanor fool you. Though normally docile, these creatures could be deadly when threatened, and could easily roll themselves through trees and boulders. When you see this thing rolling towards you, best to stay far out of the way. Another recent familiar creature for us Dark Crystal fans is the Nurlock. We all remember Deet introducing us to these majestic beings, and it is quite moving to witness these peaceful worm-like giants meandering through their day. A Nurlock's body was specifically designed for traveling through the deep caves of Grot, with a tubular shape and many eye stalks lining its frame, as new eyes grew on each section of the body as it aged. They were honored and farmed by the Grotten, who harvested its milk, cheese, and skin to create leather after it had died. They were also capable of giving off a faint bioluminescent glow due to eating glow moss, and were remarkably sensitive to their environments. For instance, if a farmer noticed that a nurlock was not glowing, it was an early sign of malnourishment, or if they ventured too far to the surface, they were actually unable to survive due to what the Groton considered high altitude. Holler bats were another creature native to the caves of Grot. They were plush, fuzzy balls of reddish dark fur, with beaked faces, small yellow eyes, and long arms which could be outstretched into four spindly fingers, each connected by a membrane. Although they could not fly far without resting, they only needed to float short distances between stalactites and stalagmites, emitting a loud, piercing, hollering cry to its surroundings, acting as a form of navigating vision, echoing in the darkness. They were also an integral part of Grot's ecosystem, as hollerbat droppings provided perfect fertilizer for one of Grot's essential resources, glow moss. The Nebri is a creature we all know very well, as it was first introduced very briefly in the original film. Appearing as giant grub-like creatures, their bodies were rotund, wobbly, and covered in a thick slime of mucus that warded off any potential predators. Its only distinguishing feature being a wide, smiling mouth and ruby-red eyes that would glow whenever it was excited. They were native to both the Swamp of Sog and the wetlands of the Endless Forest. Prized by the podlings for its delicious milk and soft meat, the Nebri was consumed and utilized almost exclusively by podling communities, as the females were capable of producing many young over its very short one to two year lifespans. And, according to the podlings, they would only use those who had died of natural causes. The Mounders have been one of the most popular unknown creatures of Thra for a long while, but unfortunately, we never got a chance to see them fully realized. Mounders were slow-moving, lumbering creatures with two sets of arms and legs attached to dexterous fingers, a thick coat of fur, and a goofy, shriveled face framed by two horns. Everyone is born with two birth seeds, 
which were quite literally trees growing from its back, and when they fully matured, the trunks would remain attached to each side of their bodies. Utilized mostly as plow pullers and workloaders, mounters were actually quite intelligent, designing makeshift shelters from grass and soil, helping the Gelfling construct irrigation canals, and even defending their owner's territory in wild packs. With the largest wingspan of any creature in Thra, the crystal skimmers were enormous ray-like beings that could use the air of the desert to glide across the surface, and could even hover for a short period of time by blowing hot air from its tail-like snouts under its wings. Over many trine, the Dusan have developed strong relationships with these creatures, having long used them to navigate the desert for transporting supplies, people, fighting a battle, and even warning of sandstorms far away, as skimmers could sense the dangerous clouds far off in the distance developing much earlier than any Gelfling could. The Sedetic quickly became a new favorite of ours as soon as we encountered it in Skektek's lab. Although it resembled a mouse or a rat, it was actually a small, flightless bird. Covered in feathers, with fast scurrying feet, and two independent eye stalks, they could be found racing across the forest floors. Sedetics could be a variety of colors, but when raised in captivity, their fur never developed past the original green, and their only useful feature seemed to be its large, very strong beak, which it utilized to crack open nuts and seed pods. Their only true use appeared to be that of a charming pet, as they were low-maintenance, simple, quiet creatures. Even Skektek himself kept one as a loyal companion. The Scrumuncher may not seem like a creature that you know, until you remember that disgusting scene where Skexo places one on his foot. As you can probably imagine, these beetle-like beings craved dead flesh, and could be found all throughout Thra, wherever there was rotting material. In fact, rather disturbingly, if enough were gathered in one area, they could actually reduce a corpse to bones in only a few hours. Although they sound morbid, these tentacle-faced creatures were actually incredibly vital to Thra's ecosystem, as not only did they help to decompose material, but their waste provided valuable nutrients for the soil. The Lock Snake is one of the most unique and interesting creatures in all of Thra. Although the babies are born soft and pink, they soon begin to ingest various rocks and pebbles as they grow, and the material of the stone is absorbed into their skin and transformed into their bodies to form a nearly impenetrable metallic armor. Found burrowing through the caves of Grot or the mountains by the Seafin coasts, lock snakes do evolve to consume real prey, but remain rock eaters their entire lives, constantly fortifying and strengthening their skin. They also have a very unique skull structure, which allowed them to latch onto their own tail, forming a very tight lock. In the wild, this ability was utilized to trap, capture, and asphyxiate their prey by creating an unbreakable bond. But this trait was immediately identified by the Skeksis, and soon they began using them to guard their valuable possessions. <laughs>